How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Bree here with Ginger in the Desert Creations. Uh, Pete's Nebula number one went so well that I want to try to do it again, but layer the cup a little bit differently and see what happens. So we are going to do another acrylic straight pour. Let's go paint. Nebulous Nebula rides again. Dirty straight pour. Going to use a nine ounce plastic cup this time instead of the beaker because I want to know how different it feels if it has a pour spout or a rolled side like a drinking glass does. Much like last time, we're going to use Sergeant Art Aztec Gold Creative Inspirations Thalo Blue Creative Inspirations Purple Lake Folk Art Treasure Gold Blue Quartz Sergeant Art Pouring Medium as a Sparkly Pearl White Folk Art Treasure Gold Fire Opal and Lady Bitty Bit of Folk Art Treasure Gold Antique Cup. Also using as base coat Montmartre Ultramarine Blue with a bit of Montmartre Black mixed in to make a lovely little gray color that I like. Now the problem that I felt that I had with the last one, and I don't necessarily know yet because it ain't dry yet, I'm just skipping ahead and playing anyway to see what happens, but I felt like not enough of my colors ended up in the middle. So what I want to do is give a healthy dollop of all the colors in the bottom of the cup so that they will pour out very last in the center of our nebula. And then maybe I won't have to stretch so much to get so much interest that I want and not, you know, push everything that came out of the center or that came out of the bottom of the cup off. We'll see. So give me a healthy dollop of fire opal. I'm going to pit it against this blue quartz. Lovely color. Touch of the antique copper, but not too much, otherwise it won't show up anywhere else. Because we ain't got a lot left. Gold. Bit of gold. Drizzle, drizzle. I want to have the white in there, hopefully, as something that that stuff will play on. Just kind of pop off of the rest of it. Now I'm going to layer the phthalo blue and the purple lake and then I will dirty pour the rest of everything else back through once the cup is as full as I want it to be. So we want a, a cup that's about halfway full because we need around five ounces. So we want a little over halfway full because we need five ounces and this is a nine ounce cup. So I am just going to pour to my heart's desire. Layer, layer, layer paint. And I'm pouring it so that it layers on top of each other and not dirty pouring this part. I will dirty pour where I pour from up high and let the paint sink down in with the colors that I'm trying to get to represent on top of this sort of backgroundy color that I'm putting in right now. Poured it from a pie and it refused to sink. Of course. Oh well. Maybe it will when I pour more stuff on top of it. I'm gonna attack it. I bomb it with some gold. That sunk nicely. I want plenty of this fire opal. It's kind of just hanging around on the top. Pour it from higher. Yay! Sinking! There's really not a lot of this antique copper. Blue quartz. I always want to call it blue topaz, but it is blue quartz. Purple topaz is the one that I keep getting it mixed up with. 
little shot more of this leftover gold, because why not? The rest of this fire opal, I'm just going to blob it on the top there. And we are going to call that good. Nice funky little gray. Now this base coat I did a little bit different with because I used Sunnyside M1, the Sherwin-Williams flow extender as well as Floetrol because this bottle of Floetrol that I just recently got that I picked up at Lowe's is thicker than the one that I got mail order near Christmas. But the Sherwin-Williams Flow Extender works okay. It's very watery. We ready for a dirty cup? Straight pour? Fantasy pour? Whatever you want to call it. Cause here it goes. I'm going to twist my wrist a little bit because that gives a little bit of variety in how it pours out. Everything kind of changes based on density of the paints and the way you hold your cup and the way you hold your wrist and the way you jiggle, the way you move, and it just all depends on everything. So this at least has more of that sort of candy striping that I was going for in the middle. I think the gold and the blue have clubbed together to give me green, which is interesting. Let's kiss it with a bit of fire, shall we? Pop the bubbles. Pop those pesky bubbles. I like that there's more going on in the center now. It's nice. Everything's nice. Okay. Might want to see about saving what's going on over here. So I think I'm going to push this way because I think this is what I can afford to lose the most and it's sitting way over here anyway. So watch me work. <laughs> I'm just going to pick up the canvas this time instead of picking up the whole rack because yeah. There we go, gliding quickly towards that corner. Can you see well enough? I think you can. And boom, over the corner. Not too far because we don't want to lose all that interesting stuff. Coming back to the center, which you can see fairly well because all of this color is slowly sliding right across, and that's about where the weight of the paint is. I don't know about the rest of it, but that definitely has a nebula feel. I am going to... there's largely the fire opal over here, so I think I'm going to push this way and let some of that fall off. Because that's just a big block of fire opal when we got more of the colors going on over this way and kind of over here, although you can't see it very well right now. So slide on over that away. And I will move my hand in to kind of help Guide that corner over and get coverage. Boom. Okay. Mmm. Lump. Lump alert. Lump alert. Lump alert. Right there. Lump alert. Lump alert. It must be removed.
Okay, I'm going to pull it back towards, well, actually I'm going to let a little more of that slide off, I think. Because I don't think I need as much paint as is on here, and I think that I will lose other bits of interest if I just automatically pull back towards me. Okay, I'm coming in towards the center. I am going to try to kind of catch some of this so that hopefully we don't lose all of what's going on at these edges. But I can't guarantee. Okay, the way the paint is coming up towards this leading edge, it's near my thumb. Now you can see it gliding this away. And boom, I got a handful of paint right there. Okay, coming back towards the center. That's about the way the paint at the center. Now coming towards my left hand here. And the lighting isn't great because I don't have light on that side. Hooray! And we're pulling, 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 pulling. Here goes the paint down to this side and to that corner. Yeah. And I really got a handful of paint that time. Okay. Pull it back in here. We are now pushing the weight of the paint back to the center. And... I will look at what I may want to shift or move or try to remove along the way. Okay, we got paint in the center. The weight of the paint is at the center now. I want to take a think about what we're doing here. I like this and the orangeness there. I don't know if the center is too busy for me. Kind of don't love this space right in here and that pinch where I removed the lump. I do like what's happening here. It's very subtle and a little swooshy whoosh. So I might actually try to just push it off here and see what happens. Because there is still enough paint to keep it moving. And I just don't like that big section right there. And we will see if we can turn it into something that I like better. I will just tip it up on its side. And we will let the paint go that way. I just pushed it right off that edge. I've opened up a little more of that gold in there. That's nice. It's nice. Everything is nice. <laughs> there is a show called Mrs. Brown's Boys, and every time I say something is nice, that always reminds me of, that's nice. Mrs. Brown, and that's nice. So, mm-hmm, that's nice. I am now liking all how you seeing what is happening to this corner that is beauteous. I'm a little concerned that this might be busier than I want it to be. But that might be okay at the same time. I'm going to just kind of let a bit of this shift this away. Trying to decide where I want to leave the big bit in the middle. I do kind of like that it's subtler off to this side. I don't know about that corner. I think it draws you a little bit too much and there's nothing there. I mean, there's this nice ribbon, but then there's absolutely nothing right in that proper corner. 
I like that everything over here is really subtle and really wispy and there's this bit in here just kind of feeds into it. We got this sort of ready looking going on there and I do think that I'm going to try to remove or improve that corner over there. Don't drop it. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, we've got stuff at that edge now. Take a look at that cup. All the colors. I think that looks pretty nebulous. What do you think? Yes, yes, yes. All of it stretched and got wispy. Yeah. Now, same question from the last nebula I did. Do I add glitter? I think I have to, don't I? Don't I just have to? Just make sure there's no bubbles or anything still left. We want glitter, don't we? Of course we do. There we go. And the blue, because I can't use just the clear glitter. No, 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 that would be against the law. Here we are. Wet result, and I'm a weirdo. Close, 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 close. There's the gold. Playing with that fire opal. Touch of the blue quartz. Big old bit of fire opal right in the center, which is kind of what I was working towards. Nice little swoosh of colors. It's a very subtle corner that I like. Sort of ready swooshiness. River of all different kinds of colors there. That's very nice. And that corner that used to be very blah is now nicely orange and kind of pinky. So there we go. We will see what it looks like when it's dry. Bye bye. Can I just say I am a little annoyed with this one because after it dried, I noticed there is damage. It either got that in shipping or it got that in manufacture and somebody just didn't give a damn. That is annoying. But, I guess you just have to deal with some things, right? That means that it's supposed to be framed, even though I really don't do the framey thing. Anyway, here it is. Here we have dry result. Pete's Nebula 2. 2 as in also T-O-O. -O. This one looks a lot more like gases in space. It's got that beautiful blue going on. I did want it to be darker, but ho oh ho well. We've got the lovely scribbly cloudiness going on all throughout here of our big old nebula. And this beautiful spirally thing in the corner. And all the sparkle sparkle from the lovely, lovely 
glitter. Because who says you're ever too old to play with glitter? Anyway, and there it is. Pizza Nebula 2. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.